Hello and welcome back to the 34th episode of the Rule of Two here on the C-Cinema Reviews channel. We are very sorry that this one is a couple days late, maybe three days late, depending on when it gets out there. But, um, yes, we're very, uh, you know, we're very sorry, uh, but like Sunday was just, Sunday was nuts, Saturday was nuts, yesterday I was working most of the day, so... We're doing it live today on Tuesday. Hopefully, I can get it out tonight. It's not live, though. It's, you know, it'll probably get out tomorrow. Um, But, yeah, today's topics. And with me, and with me, before I get the whole, oh, you're so sexist thing. And with me is the... They already heard me. <laughs> is the, is my co-host, Misa Sista. Duh! Yes, and today our topics are, we've got two, um... Our topics are the we've caught up on resistance, which is resistance. which is you know it's good that we've caught up because it's kind of a big deal in Star Wars universe right now. What's a big deal? It's kind of a big deal. And then we have Darth Vader. We're caught up on Darth Vader. Vader. Issue number twenty two has lo- uh, Darth Vader like pretty much getting like a story from Lord Moment. So yeah, those are our two topics today. Uh, we thank you very much for watching uh, this this video. Uh, and we hope that we can. Uh, Big you know, hello to George and JJ George and Shmi and Shmi Shmi. Uh, uh, Benny off and Weiss. Yes, yes of hello course. everybody. And and everyone else out there, we're not forgetting you guys. We're just you know, we know that they watch, and so we just want to you know <clears throat> special shout out. Yes, because they're kind of a big deal too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we just we haven't like confirmed that Ryan Johnson is listening and yeah. watching. Um, but once we do that, we'll definitely welcome him every week also. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, we've confirmed a dead lady's watching. Um, not Ryan Johnson, though. <laughs> It'd be great. It'd be great. Someone tweet it at him or, you know, just tell him when you see him. Um, yeah, let's get into uh, the Star Wars Resistance. We caught up. It is officially like six episodes into its run, but it's really only five. Um, because the first one is like episode one and two together, you know, it's very confusing. Let's move on. <clears throat> it's, you know, the, the, the last episode is children from Tehar episode. Well, what have we reviewed so far? The first, literally one. the first one. That was okay. It. So the second one, triple dark episode, um, the pirates attack, which is great. It's, it's like, we see a, uh, Trandoshan. Which is Bosk's uh, species. Bosk. Uh, we don't know if yeah, that's Bosk. Yeah, everybody thought... Nobody we ca- even like, thought yeah. it was Bosk. Nobody <laughs> called him Bosk, but um, it's a Trandoshan. We know that for sure. Yeah. Uh, there and there. So uh, in that episode, we learned that the pirates that are attacking this place are working for the First Order, are working for Phasma herself. Um, we learned it in that episode. Yeah. Then Fuel for the Fire episode, which is the... Wait, w- in that one, are we going to tell what we thought of that episode? Well, I mean, we can. I was just going to kind of like go, you know, give a little overview of the la- of all the episodes okay, and then, then tell what we thought of them all and then we can go through all of them together. Okay. Uh, Fuel for the Fire was the quote unquote fourth episode. Um, it's the one where that other dude gets like some hyper fuel and almost blows himself right. up and Elijah gets Wood. gets it's... mad at Kaz for saving him. Um, and it's then the Elijah Wood episode. Yeah, the Elijah Wood episode. Blondie McBlonderson. Um, I forget his name. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, Rick. And then he has a Celestian with him, and then another human, which is cool. A what? Celestian. Uh, Nia Nub's character. Oh, okay. that that race is oh, yes, from Celest. Um, and then the High Tower episode. The High Tower is the one where Kaz gets into the tower on the on the on the the platform. Right, he goes up to see. Uh, Hyped Phazon actually invites him and uh, his girlfriend. His purposely is up. Uh, his purposely. His purpose is obviously to spy. To spy. To spy. To spy. To spy. Um. And High then... Phazon helps him out. Uh, he like he does some spy, and the First Order sees him. Um, yeah, you know it's that's and how then it goes. The last episode, hijinks ensues, and then the last episode is the children from Tehar. The heart, the First Order comes back again, and is going after these children from Tehar because they are the only survivors from this village that apparently Kylo Ren attacked. Yes, they drop 
the name. They dropped the name of Kylo Ren. They, so basically, um, and, and like the first order is trying to find them, um, but Kaz helps them escape. Right. I believe that in the second episode, <clears throat> the the I want to say the Empire. The First Order is sending these uh, pirates. pirates in so that they can get the man in the high tower. What's his name? Captain Doza. Captain Doza to take their help. The mm -hmm. First Order wants to be in yeah. that platform. And that doesn't work. Because so, yeah, the First Order wants to take control of the platform. So what they're doing is they're sending these pirates to raid the platform to show, to show Captain Doza that he needs help protecting it. Right. And so... Doze is like, and eh, we got this covered. I got my pilots, all this stuff. The aces. Yeah. And then in <clears throat> the High Tower episode, we see Red. We see Red McRed guy, not Cardinal. Red Trooper. Not not Red uh Red Tie Fighter uh Trooper. Tr red Tie and they Pilot. They talk to Doza about a deal and what's his name. And Doza's Kaz like, get it. out of here. And Doza's like. I don't awful spying. Like he like, needs more. He's of a, no. He's nowhere near being James Bond. Doza he's, needs more than whatever they're giving him. So he says no. Then and mm -hmm. but there's a possibility. And so what the first order basically does is they put out a large bounty for these children that escaped Kylo Ren's destruction. Yes. And Kylo Ren they don't put want a no huge, survivors. Um, like bounty on them, and. Sort of, it's another, like, plea to get Doza. Yeah. But it's, Doza doesn't know that. Like, mm -hmm. and we meet some turtle just people. just trying to get, yeah. We, need, we meet some turtle people with, like, bull rings in their noses. But can I just say that, that? He's an awful spy. He's, he's terrible. He does not deserve the name he's of spy. He's the worst. Our main character, Kaz, I'm is surprised not a he's spy. still alive. Tell me about it. Seriously. Dude's like, this guy is dodging. I understand dodging the whole like first order stormtrooper aim because that's just how it goes. It's very kitty. It's so kitty. This guy's the worst pilot ever. He's a terrible mechanic. I don't know why Jaeger's paying this kid. Well, he's not paying him much. He's not paying him they, much. They're but always making jokes about how he like, should be paying Jaeger. <laughs> whenever they go into like the cantina there. The lady is always like, oh, hello. Would you like a water? Do you free, want a water again? Free waters. <laughs> <laughs> like, and then at one point, he starts drinking, and she takes it away, and she's like, that's one sip too many, boy. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. uh... The, so he's an awful spy. You, know, you, you particularly liked the humor in it. Did I? You were laughing. <laughs> I was I was. Well, there. I just... <laughs> it's, like, it's fine. It's definitely kitty. Mm-hmm. Some parts made me laugh because, you yeah. know, when the it's first that... The first kind of bums, though, right now. There's funny, which is fine, and then there's cheesy funny, which is just like, ugh. But then when you take it to that next level, it's actually the, funny again. The absolute cheese, yeah. Yeah, and I feel like that's a bit... <clears throat> okay, yeah. I, like I that. think the best episode was um, the, the latest one, Children from Tehar. Uh, I think, like... I like that the First Order is very heavily involved. They are clearly the villains. It's not just his rise to becoming an ace pilot. Or, I mean, it's like, that's not it. They are clearly the villains. And they clearly have influence over this platform. Because Doza is, like, having them bring in shipments and stuff like that. So, like... Well, I just don't understand, like... He talks to Jaeger, Yeager, whatever, whoever calls him, whatever. Um, he talks to Yeager, Kaz does, and Yeager's like, oh, not that many people, like, nobody knows what the Resistance is. Yeah. And yet, everybody, everybody knows, knows who the First Order yeah. is. And I'm just like, where in the timeline is this? And, like, are they just, like, out publicly parading their, like, stormtroopers I mean, the force, everywhere? The, they are on this platform, so maybe that's why everybody on this platform knows. Yeah, but they, people leave. Yeah, it's true. It's true. The story, like, the First Order should, like, knowledge of them should be getting around the galaxy, right? Yeah. Um, It's just that, like, you really only ever see, like, three guys, right? So maybe, maybe they're not spreading the word 
or or at least it's not getting to the main republic that the first order is a, de- a genuine threat to them at this point. Right. Maybe that's what's happening. I People did. know that they're out there, but they're like, no, it's okay. They're like fragments of the, the empire. They no way they can challenge us, right? Sure. Maybe that's what they're like. In the high tower, <clears throat> I did like that we got a little bit more into the pilots, the ace pilots. Yeah. With um, phase, phase on hype. Hype. We literally just got him though. Like, yeah. no one else. But I he's... thought he was going to, like, introduce us to the cast during that right. episode. And we would have finally got the obviously a spy Imperial, ex-Imperial. He has a connection with somebody that Kaz works with. I forget her name. Yes. But, um... um British girl. Yeah. But anyway. The Brit. <laughs> he... Hype Faison is actually an interesting character because whenever the shipments come in from the First Order... Mm-hmm. All the pilots will go up and sort of escort them, right? It was like three. All right, there was four, <laughs> first of all. Okay. And they will and they will go up and do that, and right? Help them like bring the shipment yeah. in, yeah, or whatever. But Phazon <clears throat> makes like, a nah. point of like saying like, you whenever they go up, I'm not up there. Yeah. Like so, he clearly is not a part of that. You had a theory about him? Did I? Yes. I don't. You remember. were like. Could he be a spy? Oh, yes. I thought for a second there. <laughs> thanks for telling me my theory. Um, for a second there, I thought, and maybe I still <clears throat> do, that he's another uh, resistance or whatever we're calling it. Spy? Spy. Yeah. But, like, but what, why would they have two? Yeah, why would they have two? The and one is clearly has way more access to the place yeah. than the other one. <laughs> But I could see later on if they wanted to, he could totally he could, become like, one. Yeah, and become help one. Out. Um, you know, become a, a fighter in the the resistance, the resistance. Resistance. He could become a pilot. We there. see in try to challenge Poe as the ace and just like fail miserably. Yeah, mm-hmm. of course. Of course. In Fuel for the Fire, we see some pictures of Jaeger. Jaeger's family. Yes, and also some of him in the rebellion. In the rebellion, he was at the Battle of Jakku. Yes. Oh, mm-hmm. so maybe they're not quite the rebellion. Maybe they're more of a republic then. No, they're. They're, they're still. The... They're the, yeah. All right. Well. I mean, they were like in the very early stages of the republic, but they probably just you know whatever. Sure. It's the rebellion. So he had. The Kaz guy... himself says that he was in the rebellion when he's like looking at the pictures, and um. He yeah. Ha- well, he has the very <clears throat> iconic. Orange, orange with the white jumpsuit. Yeah. Yes. He was he's in so the So that was cool. A little bit of tidbits. And that's the only time I think we see His family? No. Well that too. <laughs> but um, I know, tragic backstory alert. <laughs> we haven't seen too much from the Battle of Jakku. Jakku? Well, we've seen a lot actually. In Lost Stars, yes. No, I mean on screen. Okay. Uh we see in a video game. In Battlefront yeah. 2, we see it, but other than that, this is the only thing, like, in you a see movie one slash frame, TV. one picture with yeah. guys, like, doing selfie with but the Star Destroyer. In the it has been talked about. It's in a the lot. video game. It's a huge deal. It's I think in, in a my... couple of the books, I think, Aftermath. So what happens What happens in the canon timeline is the big, the big deals, you know, the, the big deals deal. are the first Death Star, right? The second Death Star, because, like... Episode 5, there's not really, a, like, a galaxy-spanning fight, right? So it's the first Death Star, the second Death Star, and then the Battle of Jakku is literally the Empire's last stand, right? Before, like, they go off into the Unknown Regions and become the First Order. So, like, that you is... You know what I never that got? Is, that, in the, in, the, in the actual universe of Star Wars, is, like, the third biggest deal. You know what I never got about the second Death Star? It was is, the end of the war. Is that, like... The Empire just realized that they didn't need a whole bunch of parts of the, <laughs> the Death Star. They were like, ah, oh, we don't need that. We can still work on, like, <clears throat> this stuff that we have. But, yeah, you're right. So it's one of the big deals. It's where the war basically it's, it's ends. It's the end of the war, yes. And so, like, we've seen, heard about it in books or read about it mm-hmm. in Lost Stars, Aftermath. Aftermath, Aftermath is, is, does a, like, shows a lot of it. A lot of and then we saw it in Battlefront, and now it's the first time we've seen it on like, a frame, one frame. Yeah, that not they, even a frame, they, yeah. like a picture a in a picture, frame. A picture, yes. Um, I'm telling you though, Jaeger. But maybe that means we're getting just a little bit closer to seeing it on we screen. Well, we it's moving its way up the ranks. Books, games, 
show. What's next? It's movies. <laughs> yeah. Um. But we. Do you think Jaeger's family run, is dead? So. Jaeger's family. Yeah. Do you think they're gone? They're dead. Uh, he has a waifu and a kid. Do you think they're dead? That would totally make sense. It's Poe. No, I'm just kidding. I think it was a girl. Um. <laughs> I just not the question. Do you think they're dead? <laughs> No? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, I think they're dead. I think, like, tragic backstory alert. We're gonna get him, like, drunk and be like, Yeah, hey, my family's dead. It's the anniversary of my family. Yeah. I don't think we're gonna get that at all. <laughs> His free Jaeger water. Because Jaeger seems to be, like... He's a cool dude, but yeah, like, just like, like... Mis- just like Mr. Miyagi... Dude got drunk on the, the what, well, I think it was that the birthday or the anniversary of his wife. Like, I don't know. He got drunk and he was, you know, he had that whole scene. Yeah, they could do the same thing with Jaeger. I like, though, that they were like, they couldn't get Oscar Isaac in there for a lot of stuff. So they, they just had the aliens, the other alien step in from the resistance. It's like, I'm taking charge of this now because <laughs> yeah. Oscar Isaac's busy with all of his other stuff. That part to me was like... That was kind of funny. Okay, so we... <clears throat> he reports them in... The children of from Tehar. But... After he sort of finds out that information in the high tower, in that he episode, doesn't report it during the episode. Yeah, so he might have reported it like in between the episodes. Because they gave him weight, like that guy gave him so much praise in the children from well, Tahar. Well, because no, Poe gave him praise, and that no. guy was just like, oh, you, you know, Poe seems no, to think no. you're doing a Afterward, great job. Afterward, he was like, you're, you're doing, doing good yeah, work. Yeah, but for like Poe re- probably resistant. told him that, dude, this kid's a bum. No, no. This kid's a bum. He gave him way too much praise and was like, "You're you're just giving us so much." This is the second thing. Calm He's probably down. told them about how uh, the first order is like messing around with Doza. Still, I would like that guy Doza. started off real like a <clears throat> hard kind of thing. Like I'm in charge now, and then yeah. and well, then by the end he was they... like, "You're just doing such a wonderful job, honey. You keep going out there." And I was like, "Oh come on." You gotta give them positive feedback. No, yes, you, you gotta do. push it's them. It's a be children's like, show. You think they can't, even, them. they can't even shoot a stormtrooper yet? You think they're gonna do that? He could have ended by like, "This is good. Now bring us more." And if he had done that, ended like that, I would have been That'd like, have been "Okay." Terrible. No, no, I didn't like that because this show, like Dave Filoni shows in general, have like had a hard time with doing the quote unquote like hard, you know, stuff. Well, I just didn't like all of the compliments. Kaz does not deserve it. He's I know. horrible. We know. He's a horrible the mechanic, audience, which is George, his cover. George is watching it, and he's like, well, that's not right. He's a horrible mechanic, which is his cover. No, he's a horrible George. spy, which is his actual job. And like, he, He's ugh. a pilot. That was his job before this. Well, his job is a spy now. That's his actual job. I know. And that was terrible. I want more racing. I really are you kidding me? I do like that they're kind of making Kylo Ren out to be a bit of a Darth Vader boogeyman. I think it'd be great. Yeah, that was the only time I got excited in all six of the or yeah. five of these episodes. <clears throat> yeah, six, six, five and a half, six. <laughs> um, Whatever we're saying. Yeah, I think I'm so only far watching it's, this for this. Yeah, so far it's like good. Like you know, if we did like, not have the show, I wouldn't watch it. To be honest. What? And Kylo Ren. Oh, for this show. You mean the real yeah, yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> no. Um, <clears throat> the Kylo Ren name drop is great. Oh, and also, I did like... What? I did like the turtle things. Uh, they remind me of the uh, space whales, but they can, like, talk, or they have, like, a barely. language that we understand. What's Niku? Dude, I'm starting to hate Niku. I don't mind him too much. I hate him. He he makes for like the kitty jokes. What do you think jokes? of the tur- turtles? The turtles are turtles. I like how they now now he him like Varys and Littlefinger has like his little his little birds. <laughs> They're just turtles. Oh, I because they have like You're eyes and ears everywhere. Yeah, between. Game yeah, and yeah, we, we can see that the smart you know. <laughs> well, I don't. Benioff and Weiss can totally understand what I I'm saying. I don't know who right Varys is. <laughs> Benioff and Weiss are like, duh. <laughs> anyway, um. Varys is the bald guy. Oh yes, right. Okay. Come on, Benioff and Weiss. Is he dead by now? Put it in the comment section down below. Tell her what's up. 
<laughs> no spoilers. I'm oh sorry. my goodness. <laughs> well, you gotta watch out. Anybody can go in that show. Yeah. But I like those it's characters. A, it's a fine show. It's not great. I like those. It's little not animals. as good as well. I'll be I'll be honest with you guys. Um, Clone Wars started off pretty terribly. Uh, Rebels started off not not as bad as Clone Wars. This one might it might be the best like starting off point because Clone Wars was bad. Rebels was like Ugh. this one is just kind of like okay, let's just watch. You know. Uh, I disagree with all of what you said wholeheartedly. Yeah. What? <laughs> no, Clone Wars. Like first few episodes of Clone Wars, it's like, what is happening? I liked it. It was terrible. And then Rebels was fine. Rebel, yeah, Rebels starting, was like, eh, okay, okay. This is starting way worse than we get it. Of this us. kid's backstory is, you know, terrible. You know what? Every other protagonist in a Star Wars thing is has a terrible family history. <laughs> um. No, this is starting way worse than those for me. Uh, yeah, it's... Kaz, I, I just like, don't like Kaz. This is a new species we're getting, and I like... The turtles. I know we're back... I'm, I'm pulling back to that. But I like when they bring things from our world and put it into there and just make them a little bit more, like, Well, I mean, it may, they're on a water world, These so it makes sense yeah. that these kind of creatures... And what they do, like... They're literally turtles. What they do in this episode, I won't they're spoil engineers. it or anything, but it's a really cool, like... Ah, gotcha, kind of thing. Like, I did like that. Yeah. I forget the golden trooper's name, but it's... Pyre? Uh, something like that. Pryor? <laughs> something like that. Pyre. It's anyway. Sir Gold a lot. Even his, even his gun is gold. I'm I like, know. bro, the First Order's got money to throw away. <laughs> yeah. I don't... I'm not really a fan, but every time I see Phasma, like, the way they frame her... It's so, like, she's so menacing. She's very powerful. I like, and she, but she's a lot, even though she's more, like, the way they, sh like, do it, she's more menacing in this than in, like, the movies. Well, but yet, in, the in movies, this. In the movies, they just have more other people to focus but on. But yet, in this. She's like the bad guy. She she's the is main actually bad more guy. pleasant. Like, when well, she talks, she's a lot yeah, more because conversational. Yeah, she, like, because they're trying to swindle Doza. That's why. That's why she's that nice. <laughs> right, but she's still menacing. <clears throat> yeah, and I like that. All right, uh, that's gonna pretty much do it for our sum up of uh, the Star Wars Resistance. I think it's fine. I would like if you if you haven't watched like you know Benny Alpha Weiss might not have watched this. What do you think of the this... valuable trophy? Uh, so. I would sell that in a heartbeat. Anyway, like, Benny Off and Weiss, you guys might not have watched it. I wouldn't say watch it now. Like, we'll tell you when it starts to get good. We'll tell you because right now it's like, okay, let's get to the good stuff. Yeah. I mean, I get it. They have to set it up and, you know, all that good stuff. Anyway, let's move on to the Darth Vader issue number 22. 22. Uh, full disclosure, I have not read anything before this point. Right. She has not read point. any other comic in this series other than this one. And so, uh, I have. But I did read The Crawl, so I feel like I... Yeah, the crawl. They do a really good job with the crawl. It's like a, the easiest thing ever to like catch you up. It was so like, and this happens, and this happens, and this happens, and then she's murdered, and I was like, whoa. Yeah, that they, went so like. Yeah, so it's like that. That this, I said, uh, this is boom, boom, one of the boom. most interesting the things that we've seen in Star Wars, and it's that dark side beings generally cannot retain their form after death. Like Obi Wan and light side beings can, how they can, like Obi Wan can literally go anywhere, right? Uh, Hoth, Dagobah, they can go anywhere they want, right? Manifest themselves and talk to A people body. who are force sensitive, right? What this means is that dark side users they can't do everything that the light side users can, but if they get, if they, ha if there's an item that they, you know, they can essentially stay around after death if they manifest like their spirit into an item we've seen where there is one of those things in like a chewbacca like kids book where a dark side user manifests himself in like a book or something like that but this is the first one where it's like definitively yes that um dark side users can have 
can stay around in some form after life. So Lord Momin, who is an older public Sith Lord, um, he his spirit basically stays inside this helmet, right? Um, this helmet that he had that he wore. Uh, and we get his entire, like, he's a, he's an architect, which is really cool to me. Um, and, but not just, not just an architect. Um, we, we, we see with his backstory that, you know, he was this kid and he was, he was, uh, he had, like, affinity for the force and he obviously killed bugs because that's what bad people do. Um, then his, uh, master, her name was Sha, or S-H-A-A -A is how you spell it. She, like, got him, she trained him up, he grabbed this helmet, and he was like, yep, I'm gonna wear that. And, um, so, he, f he is not, like, just an architect, but he is an architect of the Force, which is really awesome. Because the way he talks about art, and this thing is, like, art, at, you know, for those of you that aren't Force-sensitive, art is just art, right? It's something you make that people look at and they're, like, awed by it. He wanted to make something that the Force itself would awe at. And that is something so high, like beyond the level of anything we've ever seen. And so he makes this machine, right? He makes this, not a Death Star, but he makes this machine that has world-breaking capabilities, right? City-breaking, I'd say. I don't know. Okay, know uh, yeah. Like, but... that has, you know, abilities to... And it almost like use he uses the force through this machine, and I assume that the machine like amplifies his abilities, and he literally stops time for these people, right? And and he says an eternal shrine to the dark side is what he was trying to make, and it's like to me that is so cool. Obviously the Jedi come in, break it up, and so what he does is he effectively messes up Mustafar, right? This is Mus no, that was Mustafar. That was Mustafar because um, of what like so so he couldn't do the shrine to the Force right. So what instead he used this machine to basically destroy Mustafar or make it what it is in Episode Three. I thought that he was it. like whatever he was pouring out on them was like gonna trap the people and they were all gonna be like you know put in right. the, like we don't know we really don't know what was going to happen if the Jedi didn't interfere. But, Almost like um like lava when lava goes it encases like people or things right. and it just like keeps them that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But. Like um so he basically destroys Mustafar. I love that Vader puts it on um, and that he all, starts wait, to stop like right there. consume stop, Vader. Stop. What? Stop. So how this all comes to happen? Come how Vader comes to know this? We're we're not talking about how this. We're talking about Lord Moment. Well, I'm talking about this means, but because what? I don't like Moment. No, but like that's the topic. Okay. Well, I'm just gonna say this. Well, I. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> that Vader in the crawl. Basically, Vader is. He convinced um, the Sith Lord. What's his name? Palpatine to give him Mustafar, basically, and Palpatine gives him with this helmet. And this helmet takes over, kills his architect, Vader's architect, because Vader's building his castle or whatever we call it. And so he has this helmet that has his power and to like, I don't know, I don't like this. What are you talking about? You don't know. This helmet is... Imbued possessed. with the spirit. This helmet is possessed by the spirit of Lord Moment, right? Well, I don't like that. So... Darth Vader came here with two people. He went to Mustafar with two people. One was the architect who was going to build him his castle. And one the was the second per person was the assistant. The assistant put the helmet on, killed the main Why architect. Why would you do that? Be it calls to you. <laughs> just Demi, just think think about it. Think about what uh, the lightsaber did in Episode Seven to to Rey. He she heard it. She heard it calling to her. And and that's what. So was this assistant like? No, you don't have to be force sensitive. But if something, I, I don't believe that you know something, like he's a Sith Lord. It's a Sith Lord. He can't. You can just call to anybody. He can attract people. 
Like, uh, and you... this is all comes to end with Vader getting the castle that he wants. Yeah, uh, well, getting the start of the castle he wants. It doesn't look exactly like the one right. in the Rogue but One. But Vader's not quite convinced because Momin is like, oh, it will open the door and you will get to see your beloved. Yes. And so Vader's like, like, I've been promised that before yeah, and yeah. I don't want this. So on Mustafar, there's like this nexus of the dark side energy presumably because of what Lord Moment did, right? He used the dark side to effectively mess up this entire planet, right? Uh, so I there's... thought it was from before that, because why would Moment go there in the first place if the dark side wasn't already there? So there's... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, like, there's this nexus on here, and so the castle itself that Lord Moment was going to build would allow Vader to... Or it would be like... It would be like... A doorway, you know, mm -hmm. a, a way to use the dark, like, it's it's a doorway to the nexus of the dark side, allowing Vader to use that nexus to do what he wants, and he promises him that he'll be able to see, you know, Padme again. Um, I love that Vader, like, starts to put it on, and then it's, like, possessing him, and he's, like, he has the strength, the will to not be possessed. That's pretty Yeah, awesome. and he, like, throws it away, but he does put it on, like, a local. <laughs> he puts it on a local, and... But I like... The image of, like, him putting on that helmet and then his, like, mask and helmet are, like, on the floor. Mm -hmm. Which is, like... Yeah. But that would have killed him Super if he kept cool. it on, probably. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this... But, like, this... This, to me, has, like, great significance within the new canon of yeah, Star Wars. Yeah, it does, and that's why I hate it. Because, like... But but it's it's very smart in how they did it. It's not just like oh you know you can do it anywhere. Like we saw Bane in the, uh, the Clone Wars. He was, you know, stuck in that one spot. Right. Bane was stuck in his tomb basically. Mm -hmm. And so and we saw that you know so like it would be very interesting to see what they could do, because they have some other old Sith artifacts that Palpatine has. Yeah. So it'd be cool to see if there maybe is like something else, like a holocron. That would be pretty awesome. I would have been fine if there was like a holocron in the mask or something. Because like holocrons... Yeah, if it was like Lord the... Moment's holocron. Yeah, the, I would have been more because... The avatar of the... Yeah, because you just put sort of <clears throat> your personality in there and then go with it. Yeah. But since it was a mask and mm -hmm. whoever puts it on, it's basically Moment. No, I don't like this. I don't want this pass mm -hmm. hard pass and i don't like that it's in canon yeah and um so like but it's very it's very interesting it's very interesting um it's i i it's the third thing that we have from the older public there's bane obviously there's uh the the mandalorian uh first jedi and then now there's this um presumably this is before bane because when we when we look at his backstory, he you know Shah gets him, trains him up. He kills her, but then he doesn't take an apprentice. So this is presumably before Bane, when there were more than just two Sith out there, right? This was before the rule of two was taken into place because he didn't take an apprentice on, and then these Jedi killed him. So if you know if that happened during the rule of two, then the lineage would stop. Yeah, the so, idea of an architect, though, is interesting, but I just don't like what they did mm -hmm. with the after effect. Really? With the with the helmet, or what do you mean? Like that he's in the helmet? Yeah, okay. I don't want any... I don't, I don't like the idea of them sticking around in any kind of way. The dark side should not have that. Right. I feel like the light side uh, is something different because... Mm -hmm. It's the good. You can come back because yes. you're good. Yeah. This, when you die, you die. Right. I'm not. Uh, a fan. I do. I, I am a fan of it. Um, like I, I have to disagree with you. I am a fan of what they did. Um, but the reason that uh, we pres like I assume that he destroyed Mustafar was this. Uh, there's a little panel right here. When he puts it on the local, the local goes to the dark side nexus, and he's like, he says, Ah, I am still on Mustafar. Yeah, so, and it's just like he never died. That's not fair. Dark side Obi Wan's you... been around like Obi Yoda's been ar Yoda's been around <laughs> since way back in nineteen eighty three. Yeah, dark side <laughs> users. 
But they are, need to skedaddle after no, they're dead. No, they don't. They it's very different because they Unless are Unless it's a holocron. They are confined to one thing. Just it's the same thing as a holocron. He's literally confined to one object. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want No, but he has the ability to live on. It's basically Bane transferring. Yeah, but I don't think no, I don't think that he can use the force um like Darth Vader would be able to do, you know, force wielding stuff like that. I think he can possess uh, a being, whoever puts the helmet on, but I don't think he can use the force um, in physical ways. Well, it's too close to Bane transfer all, all of that. Yeah, but yeah, but and it's I not. I don't want that. It's not because that because he's stuck in the helmet. In the Bane, in the last Bane book, ugh, I hated that. It was the worst That's why it didn't work. Worst it didn't work. That no. It didn't work. They give hints that they it did. They give hints, but it didn't work. We don't know that. We know that. We don't. We do. We anyway, do. I think that this is. I think this is like one of the most influential things to not happen in a movie or TV show. I think like the most influential thing that didn't happen in a movie was the time travel in Rebels. I think that's the most important, like, influential thing that didn't happen in a movie. Right. Obviously, things that happen in the movie are the most influential. Um, but I think this is, like, you know, I think this is really great to put in a Darth Vader comic. I would much rather have it in this comic than in, if they put it into something like Rebels. Yeah, it's too wild and wacky to go anywhere else. It's not, I think it's very within the realm of possibility. I hope not. Anyway, let's hear what you guys think about this. This is controversial here on the Rule of Two. We have one who likes it. We have one who doesn't. You decide who is right. George, I want to hear your voice in the comment. I want to hear JJ's voice in the comment. I want to hear Benioff and Weiss. And if you ever have a chance to tell uh, Ryan Johnson, tell him that this and show is... Me. And sh Sorry, Shmi. <laughs> you can live on. Just find a helmet. You can live on. Exactly. Um, yes, tell us your thoughts in the comment section down below uh, on the six episodes of the Star Wars Resistance show and on Darth Vader. What do you think this means? Do you think we can get Palpatine back? Do you think we can get Snoke back? Who knows? What? That's Snoke had a ring? He Snoke? Could, Snoke? He, he, dude, that would be sick if Snoke's like essence was was stuck into his robe and it'd be like the Doctor Strange's robe. Like you put it on and then it's just like I am Snoke. That's a cloak. <laughs> anyway, that would be funny though. <laughs> yeah, that would be It would be I think that like if you were to bring someone back like that, it would be Bane, Revan, or Palpatine. I think those are the only three you could bring back like that. I don't I don't know how you bring back any of those uh, people. Like I honestly don't know how you bring back um Palpatine because he blew up. <laughs> the Death Star blew up. Yeah. Maybe if they found like uh, maybe if they found maybe if Palpatine made him all his own uh, holocron. Holocron. That'd be sick. Uh, anyway, so yes. Tell us your thoughts in the comment section down he's below. Really into himself. Um, I there are some other theories like uh, Kylo Ren saying I'll finish what you started. Maybe that meant like bringing Pal or uh, doing this and getting Padme back. No. I, yeah, that was a dumb theory, but I'm just saying, tell us your thoughts in the comment section down below. We'd love to hear what you guys think about uh, our topics and any future topics that you would like for us to talk about, uh, obviously in the future. Um, you know, we hope you've had a good time listening and watching this episode. Uh, yeah. Anything else you want to say to the fans? No. And the creators? Do a good job, Benny Off and Weiss. We're counting on you. Also, you did it. <laughs> George, kick back and enjoy that money. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, you. We hope you have a good rest of your day, evening, night, morning. Something. Something. Uh, we hope you have a good rest of your life. We'll put it that way. Mm. And may the force be with you. Always. <laughs>